Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel if you are new here. Today is day three of foundation week, a week where I'm going to be trying out a new foundation every single day for a whole week. Then I'm going to go away and try each of the foundations for a week on their own and come back after eight weeks and let you know my final thoughts on each and every foundation that I've tried. So let's just get started. And today I am using the number seven airbrush away foundation. I've got it in the shade warm beige just because that's the shade I am in the lift and illuminate. So I tried it in the shop and it looked like it would be a pretty good match. So the foundation bottle looks like this. It's got a little dropper, it comes in a nice frosted glass bottle and number seven are one of those strange brands that aren't quite drugstore prices but aren't quite high end they sort of bridge the gap between the two but generally everything that I've tried has been pretty good quality by them and this foundation claims to be for all skin types the coverage is medium and it claims to blur fine lines and pores for a velvety smooth skin so I'll just read out a little bit of what it says on the back, it's quite long so I'll get it through quite quickly. Flawless and smooth looking skin in every light, create your perfect complexion with this incredibly light feeling foundation. Gliding over the skin like liquid silk, it delivers buildable coverage whilst blurring the appearance of fine lines and pores. Velvety smooth to the touch and ultra comfortable to wear, skin looks ready for its close up. Clever optical blurring powders give a velvet yet radium finish like your complexion has been placed into soft focus. Right, okay, so it seems like it's not going to be quite matte, but it's not going to be quite dewy. It's just going to be radiant and skin-like and quite velvety. So I guess we'll see how that goes. Like I said, I'm in the shade Warm Beige, and this this foundation was £16.50. And you can see that I've got my eyes on today, or pretty much on. I've not, com I've not completed them yet, but that's just because I like to do um, my eye makeup before my face makeup generally it is easier so I did struggle with that in the last two videos so let's just get on with it okay so like in the previous two videos I'm going to prime this side of my face and leave this side unprimed I'm going to be using the L'Oreal Infallible Illuminizing Primer I just feel like that's the most fair seeing as that's what I've used in the previous videos may as well test everything out using the same one so I'm just going to stick a bit of primer on this side I have already cleansed and moisturised my skin as normal. And I'm just sticking it on this side of my face. Please ignore my dog. There we go, I'm just keeping everything constant, just like with the previous videos, I'm going to use a beauty blender on this side and a brush on that side. So I'm just going to give this a little shake, it does say to shake before use, and then it's got sort of a dropper, so let's just see where it takes us. Okay, it looks quite thin, which you'd expect with a dropper foundation. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit on my skin to begin with. And just start applying. Okay, I didn't measure out how many drops that was. I think it was probably about two, but it's not quite enough. So I'm gonna do another. Although it just comes out in a blob rather than in individual drops. So it's quite difficult to see how much you're pumping out. And again, just like the Lift and Luminate foundation, I think it was just be the shade, but it is going on looking slightly green. I don't know if that's evident on camera, but it's got a kind of green tinge to it. like after pretty much one layer on this side of my face I haven't done under my eyes just as usual and from what I can see it is looking a pretty good coverage it's looking very medium full coverage I can still see a couple of freckles underneath but I kind of like that I do like a skin like appearance but if you look at one side of my face compared to the other you can see it definitely does even out my skin tone and it just looks very healthy just straight off the bat the greenness is now starting to subside and it's drying down to the colour that it should be, which again is much lit like the Lift and Illuminate foundation. I was kind of very confused at first when I put that on, I looked very green, but it did dry down to the right colour and this seems to be doing the exact same thing. So let's get on with the other side and put it on with a brush and see how both sides compare. Here we 
go. So this is both sides of my face done. The finish on each is slightly different as per the previous foundations. This side is definitely more dewy and lifelike and this side has more of the velvety finish that the bottle is talking about but I actually do think I prefer the velvety side a little bit more in this instance. It definitely does smooth out my skin. I do think my skin looks very smooth and nice, but I am just gonna go over this side just a little bit more with a little bit more product just to even out the coverage slightly, just focus on my problem areas and cover up any spots, etc. But so far at the minute, I think it looks nicer with the brush. I think that's just because I'm not wearing an illuminizing primer on this side, but to be honest, I do like both sides. So just to build up the coverage, I'm just gonna go with the Beauty Blender on both sides, just for ease and for speed. So like I said, it was very difficult to measure how many drops you were actually dropping out because it didn't come out in tangible drops, it just sort of splooched out the end. And I think that I would estimate it was probably about six drops because it would come out as a drop, but then it wouldn't quite come off and another bit would come out after it. So I would count that kind of as two drops. I like the way my face is looking so far. I'm gonna go away and put the rest of my makeup on and see how everything layers on top and I'll be back with you shortly. So I'm back and I've done the rest of my face. I think my skin is looking very, very healthy on both sides of my face. My skin is looking definitely very smooth. It is living up to the smoothness sort of thing. I can't see any problems at the minute. The color match is very, very good. It definitely did dry down to a more skin-like color. The green tinge did go away. That is just a very strange thing, but that is something that I do find with number seven foundations. I don't know if it's just the shade that I use or if it's across the board, but it has dried very nicely and all of the other makeup that I put on top definitely does look very nice at the minute. I am enjoying the finish of the foundation and I do feel like I look velvety. So the time is now 11.47. I'm gonna go about my day. I'm definitely gonna sort this hair out and do something with it. And I'll give you an update a bit later on. Hey guys, welcome back. This is my first update and it is now 5 to 3 in the afternoon. I've been wearing this foundation for about three hours at this stage and I'm noticing a couple of things as the day goes on. This side, the prime side, is definitely looking more luminous and bordering on maybe greasy in some lights versus this side which is just looking very healthy and very skin like so i think that this primer is maybe not a good match for the foundation but i suppose time will tell as we go on but i can definitely see what looks quite greasy around my chin around my sort of cheekbones and definitely in my t-zone i mean my nose is looking very greasy on this side as well i don't know if you can really tell but let's zoom in oh bye phone zoom you in so I'm definitely looking more shiny on this side you can see especially here that is looking very sort of oil slicky maybe at this stage but it's not the same story on this side it's, it's definitely looking glowy but it's not looking anywhere near as greasy and oily as this side so I just think that this maybe isn't the best foundation to wear with that sort of primer so I think based on the way it's wearing at the minute an illuminizing primer is probably not the best bet with this sort of foundation it is definitely a very skin like very velvety very normal finished foundation and I think it might be quite oil based so based on that putting it together with a uh, quite slick illuminizing primer isn't going to be the best idea but that's what these sort of reviews are for is to find out how how they best work and obviously through my week when i wear this foundation for a week i'm going to try out with different primers and see if it fares any differently but so far that is what i'm noticing there is a distinct difference between each side of my face i don't know if it's showing up that way on camera or if it's just in real life but yes this side is definitely looking a bit worse for work compared to this side so i'll come back in a few more hours and give you a further update hey guys welcome back for the final update of the day the time is now 20 past nine so i've been wearing this foundation for about 10 hours at this stage and we have progressed pretty much like we were before it is very very oily and very sort of shiny on this side of my face the prime side and the other side of my face is just looking very natural and it is just looking naturally glowy. It's not looking greasy in any capacity. I feel like the foundation has come off my nose on the prime side. I don't know if it's very evident here. 
where it definitely seems to have gone from this area at the end of my nose. My forehead is looking fine, however. It's just come off at the nose. Everywhere else on my face is looking really, really good. I would say that the only thing that I've got to critique about this foundation at this stage is the primed side. I mean, I think it's just definitely got to be used with a different primer. It's not looking flattering at all. I didn't look very good from about two hours in on this side of my face. This side of my face has stayed looking great all day. I wouldn't say that this looks oily or greasy, it just looks very lifelike and very natural. So to discuss the claims that the foundation made, it definitely does blur the appearance of fine lines and pores and it's important to notice that it's important to note that it also hasn't sunk into the fine lines at the side of my mouth which is unbelievable. I have hardly any foundations at all do that so that is just amazing. It's impressed me right off the bat just because of that. It's velvety smooth to the touch and ultra comfortable to wear which I would agree with. It is comfortable to wear. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing a heavy cakey foundation and it says that it makes your complexion look like it's been placed into soft focus which I would also agree with. When I've caught sight of myself in the mirror today I have really enjoyed the way my skin's been looking. So yes, I definitely wouldn't use it with the luminizing primer in the future. I am going to try it with a mattifying primer or just a normal hydrating primer and see how that works. Or a pore minimizing primer, just any other sort of primer not luminizing. So, But so far this is my favourite foundation that I've tried this week. I'm really enjoying it and I can't wait to try it for my full week to see how it goes on with the other primers as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up if you did. I would love it if you could subscribe down below before you leave because I do put out videos every single week and every day this week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!